welcome to our channel it's well here and today I'm going to be showing you how to um, put a paint finish on a piece of furniture a sort of bohemian chippy drippy layered all of the paints and um, apply an IOD stamp and then use copper leaf to burnish it on so I'm going to do this video from start to finish so follow along and you can see how I created this this is how it looks it's a really nice piece lots of detail it's been previously painted sort of shabby chic style so um, it's a bit cream for me so I'm gonna put a lot of color into it so this is the bottom half this is a drawer which I'm gonna put some fancy handles on paint the inside of the drawer and a cupboard at the bottom um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I have a bucket with some uh, cleaner and some bleach in it and I'm going to clean the whole piece first before I put any paint on it and as I said I'll be using for my first coat Annie Sloan's Oxford Navy. Make sure you give any piece of furniture a good clean, it's one of the most important steps. So here's my Oxford Navy, I'm giving it a good stir and then I'm just going to give the whole piece a good paint, brush strokes going any which way you want to build up as totally as much texture as you can all over the piece. I'm not too bothered how the first coat goes on at all or the second. I'm trying to go in different directions the second time I go. Um, but the trick is to get two good coats on so I like to leave it overnight in between coats. So this is its first coat and I'm just going to town and making sure that everywhere is covered. Um, making sure that I've got definitely into the detail and um, the bit that you didn't see in this video is I went back in with a small artist brush just to get in all of that finer detail where the kind of cherry I think they're cherries I'm not quite sure they look a little bit mm. but um, to make sure I got all those I went in with an artist brush just to get right behind them because I want that dark color to sit behind everything so I made sure that I did it and here it is after one coat Okay, so this has had two coats of the Oxford Navy and I have let it dry overnight. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with it on this front panel here just so it makes sense. And I'm going to recreate what I do on this panel over the whole cupboard. Okay, to achieve this wash that we're going to be doing on the piece, I'm using Barcelona Orange, Annie Sloan, Hon Fleur, which is a brown colour from Annie Sloan, and Primer Red, which is a dark red. I've got a wet rag, I've got a bundle of clean dry rags, I've got a water misting bottle just in case, and what I've done here is I've mixed the Barcelona Orange, the Primer Red, and the Hon Fleur um, with about half and half of water. Um, and this is all you need to start. So we are going to be starting on this, this door here. Yeah. So follow along um, and we'll get the first coat. Now I will have come back to this tomorrow to add more, um, another coat onto this, but because it, it'll need to dry thoroughly. Um, but this is a sort of ragging technique and um, I'm going to be using, I want this to eventually have some copper and sort of autumn colours. So these are my colours. The orange looks very yellow in here, but it's actually orange. I'm just trying to, it's actually this colour of orange here that you see. It's just the lights that are making it look that colour. So um, let's get on and do this. So I'm going to, I'm going to talk you through how I'm do, going to do this area here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of my orange on first. I think this might be a little bit thick. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, it's a bit thick. We'll just give this a bit of a scoosh. Um, so I'm putting some orange on here. And I really don't think it's wet enough. Put some water onto this. Now just work in small sections. You don't want to do too much at a time. So this is... And then you take your dry rag 
and kind of bunch it up in your hands and you're gonna try and it's a bit thick let me see if I can water some of this down a bit yeah it should be about that sort of consistency don't worry about drips or anything we'll get to that Now, you just have to work slow and methodical, and this finish takes quite a bit of time to create. Your wet rag is to wipe it back where you think it's got too thick or too much. So basically, you don't want all that there. Go back to your dry rag. Now, while this is still wet, Don't worry too much about the drips. You're going to go in with your red. Now I've got a feeling that my red is too watery now as well. But we'll see how we go with this. Same thing. Dry rag. And start sort of blending them together with your um, with your rag, blending your colours together. You don't mind if it sits quite heavy in the details. You want some of the navy showing through. I'm back with a wet rag. you're going to do is you're going to put your brown on next and again I think my brown is way too thick I'm wanting some of the brown more sort of in these sorts of corners like this so we'll do something like that dry one first Blend that through into your other colours. I think and a little bit more of the red now, this is one of those ones where you really just have to keep working and working and working and working and we can go back tomorrow once this is, I'd like to leave this solidly overnight um, and we can, any bits that we feel we want to touch up or lighten or highlight, we can go back and we can do that with that. I don't mind bits of blue showing through, so we can just, where it's blue, we can just squish it with some water, get our wet rag and bring some of the blue in. We don't want to lose the majority of the blue either. We want to try and keep it. I love a drip, so I'm not too bothered if there's a bit of drippage. So you can see what I've done here. Um, I'm going to try and just gently move the camera back so you get an idea 
I'll do the whole of the front and then I'll give you a close up of where this is going so far. So here I am working on the other side of uh, the cupboard front and I'm just repeating the same steps. Put my paint on in sections, adding some water, blending them together with the dry rag first of all and then coming in with the wet and the wet's helping me remove more paint to really kind of like peek more of the blue through the finish. Now at this stage I'd like to add, this is what I call the dog's dinner phase and sometimes when Martin comes into the studio and sees it at this stage, he really does raise an eyebrow but things really do, you know, like come together. You, you just can't be frightened, you just got to keep doing it. Look at how it's working out for you and kind of assess it as you go. I mean I love that orange that's caught and the kind of left hand side there. This is me wiping away, you know, some of the um, colour to to show more blue and really you just have to have fun with it and you really have to keep the faith that your, your colours that you've chosen will work because you don't use, need to use the same colours as me you can use whatever colours you want and this is the thing about creativity it can be whatever you want you can do whatever you want on it I've just picked these colours because I was thinking sort of kind of autumnal sort of oranges and I want I knew I wanted to use coppers and things like that so these were the colours I picked out and I thought the really dark sort of Oxford navy in the background would really kind of give it that sort of kind of really sort of kind of really make it pop so as you can see I'm just working my way along the jaw here and I'm just doing exactly the same thing I'm wiping it on and then bringing it off and I do sometimes just get the spray bottle and just kind of wash it completely off now let's talk about drips. I love a nice drip. I don't like loads of drips. I don't like them to look too contrived but I like drips here and there and I like that look. And if that look is not for you then don't water it down as much. Keep it drier and just work a little bit harder or you could put some paint glaze in it that will help it move with less water um, on your paint. You can do these sorts of things. You don't have to have all the drips. Um, Sometimes if it's too drippy, I'll move it back up the piece, you know, with a like a three inch oval brush or just my cloth. It, it depends, but I do like drippy finishes. So, you know, I'm quite happy with, you know, things looking that way. Not too much, as I said, but a little bit. And here I am. I'm just I'm just keeping on pattern. And I think by now you're probably getting the idea of what I've done to you know to cover the whole piece now I'd like to add at this point I do see that I'm coming tomorrow that I'm going to be adding more paint but after it had dried overnight after I had done the acrylic which you're going to see coming up it didn't need any more paint it was it was really quite nice the way it was so I just left well enough alone so I just thought I'd mention that so that's me just working my way all the way around and putting a bit more orange and a little bit more red in where I want it or watering it back where I need it it's just how you want it. So this is how it looks so far. Now the piece is still very wet so it's a bit glary and a bit shiny but you can see where it's going. It's starting to really, really look quite good. So once it's dried um, we'll move on to the next stage but this is it so far. But as I said, you know, it's kind of hard to tell because you can see that it's still very wet but I just wanted you to see where it was going at this stage. But I'm starting to really love it. So this is what I'm saying. Just stick with your work. Well, it's been drying all afternoon. And it's got all the um, rag technique on it. The wash, all the colours start to settle in all the grooves. It's still a little bit wet on here and there. But this is the look we're going for. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I have... I've just got some water, not much, just a little bit, and I've got some of this copper coloured uh, metallic paint, which I'm going to add to this, I'm shake it up and I'm going to give it one last spray and let it dry overnight because we're going to be adding lots of coppers to this tomorrow. So um, didn't have much so I'll just put it all in. So that's that exact colour. Get rid of that. Now
So this is one of my most favourite things to do, adding paint, water and spraying it onto furniture. What I'm doing actually in here is I'm kind of framing the piece out, you know, kind of going round and then kind of having some runs down the front. Um, it all, all settle and all the um, sort of relief and things of the piece and it just makes it pop. The colour's a little bit readier than I thought, but you know what, it actually works perfectly. When the metallics dry, it loves a lovely kind of sheen in your piece and you'll see that when it dries. Okay, so it's dried again overnight and all the um, sort of glittery type of acrylic that we sprayed onto it is all kind of dried onto it and it gives it that lovely sort of glittery sheen, which is really nice. But now we're going to put some detail across the front. We're going to run it across the front and I'm going to use copper leaf. Now, I wondered all these different ways that I was going to do it. I was thinking of copper leaf in with stencils and everything. But what I've decided to do is I've got some IOD stamps here. Now, I have the full collection here of the Peony stamp. But I also have the Chrysanthemum stamp as well. And what I'm going to do it first is I'm going to use stays on ink and I'm going to stamp a design I want just in the black. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use gilding adhesive and a small artist brush and I'm going to paint over the black lines of the flowers, let it dry and then gild it with the copper. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to bring the camera in quite close but I'll keep it where it is just now so you can see me kind of like working out how my design's going to go across this. So I'll speed this bit up because it'd probably take me some time to kind of get it just right. So um, just watch along. So off camera I'm just um, inking my stamps and I want a sort of organic design and I'm mixing the peonies, the IOD's peony stamp and the chrysanthemum stamps which are both glorious to be able to paint in and if you paint furniture at all they're, they're amazing for painting furniture. I would pondered doing Lady Shalott stamps because I love the flowers on that but I thought this would be easier probably to gold leaf. Now I haven't kind of drawn it out or anything where I'm putting my stamps I just thought I'd do a sort of kind of almost like a sort of posy or a little bunch on each side varying the sort of sizes and then use the leaves from both sets to kind of give the the stamps and the eventually the copper some movement so I, as with all of you know the ID stamps you ink your stamp and um, you don't do what I'm just doing there is I'm going back in just to because I missed a little bit but I knew that it wouldn't matter if there was a little bit of ghosting because I was going to be painting it in but you shouldn't really do that but yeah you should get it right the first time so you ink your stamp uh, with your stamp pad you can use the IOD ink I'm just having to use these on because I don't have any IOD ink at the moment and you just tap it all over hold your stamp with one hand and tap it around with your other now it's really very quite difficult for you to see the actual design because the piece is quite dark where I'm stamping it but I've got kind of like a posy of flowers on, on both doors and I've got some just at the tops of the cupboard and um, where they open and you can't really see because I'm off camera which is a bit daft but um, I'm just doing that um, at the tops of each cupboard as well and making sure that I didn't use I didn't make them symmetrical I decided that I wanted something far more bohemian and organic than that and uh, I didn't want both cupboards to look the same but I did want the sort of volume if you know what I mean I wanted the same amount of florals I just didn't want the same flowers so whereas maybe I used a sort of larger peony stamp I used the larger chrysanthemum in the other one and did it that way just to mix and match my stamps and this is me, my thought process in my head. I'm just working out where I'd like to put the leaves because the leaves are going to give it a lot more movement. Um, I decided it didn't really matter how many I was going to stamp on. I was in it for the long run and I didn't mind that I knew that I was going to have to paint these all in with the the uh, size, the glue, the adhesive glue. So I wasn't too bothered. I'm trying to get you so that you can actually see it this time. So again, just patting them on, holding it with one hand so you don't shift and tapping it with your fingers so you get the whole outline. And I'm just being quite, you know, blasé about it really. I'm not overthinking it. I think if you overthink things, you'll never get anything done. Whereas I quite like the organicness of just kind of moving along. You don't have to worry about, you know, masking anything off because you're going to be gilding it all at the end. So it's all good. 
So this is me just moving on to the other cupboard and I'm pretty much doing, as I said, I've just done, you know, I'm just kind of mixing and matching and sorry, I'm doing a lot of kind of like patting about and get my stamp um, all linked up there. And uh, I really think I've done, I've tried to do it um, before and what I've tried to do is I've tried to use the size on the stamp and stamp the stamp with the size and then try and gold leaf and it came out well but not not as um defined as I wanted so I, I was lying in bed awake and I was thinking about the way I could actually make it much sharper and I thought I know what I can do I thought I'll stamp it first and then I'll paint it with the glue and then I'll put the copper on top but the IOD stamps are fantastic for things like this they really are I mean they just lend themselves to this kind of look as well I mean really traditional as well but obviously if you're going for this look too they're really good so that's what I'm doing and they're just so easy to use I mean I, I don't I tend never really to use the mount I just always tend to just go for it uh, maybe that's not the right thing to say but you know I, I, I just I'm quite brave um but as I said, you shouldn't kind of keep going back over it. You should get it right the first time. But in general, you know, you try. So this is me just sorting out more leaves and making sure that there's there's plenty of movement. So by now, I think you've got the, you know, what it is I'm doing. I'm taking my stamps. I've kind of thought out my pattern. And all I'm doing is I'm printing my initial pattern with my IOD stamps, the peonies and the chrysanthemums onto the cupboard. And... Um, once I've got the design that I like, I'm then going to be painting them in with the, uh, I call it size glue, but it's it says it's gilding adhesive. So if you're looking for it, um, you can get it on Amazon. Uh, it comes in two little bottles. You get one little bottle with the, the adhesive and one little bottle with the varnish. I tend not to use the varnish. I do use it on smaller projects if I'm doing like smalls or canvases and things like that, but on furniture. I'll just use my usual, either I'll be waxing or I'll be lacquering, whatever. I wouldn't, and if it was a, cop, a gold leaf, I probably would always wax. But because it's copper leaf and it's quite glary almost, I think I'll be lacquering it. Just to take a tad of that shine off it a little bit. Um, because my furniture lacquer is quite matte and that will stop that happening. So this is a wee close up of how the stamps all look. And they really do... Um, really make it and you'll see and you'll see how they really pop once the copper's applied so next we're going to be moving on to the fun part we're going to get on to the bit where we it's all going to start becoming apparent so using the gilding adhesive I'm just using a fine artist brush and what I'm doing is I'm just painting in between all of the leaves now as i said i've tried stamping my iod stamps to, with the gilding it doesn't do a thick enough line for the copper and the gold leaf to stick to so i have never tried this either so it all remains to be seen whether this actually works or not whether it ends up looking like a flower or whether it doesn't um so i'm just going to go around each one of my flowers, like I'm showing you here, where you can't stick any of your copper or your gold leaf onto your gilding adhesive until it's gone completely clear. When it's gone clear, it's ready to stick it on and we'll get to that. I'll show you that piece of me doing that once we get there, but I've got quite a, a lot of flowers to paint in and by the time I paint them all in, we should be good to um, do the copper. I'm not going to make you endure this whole process. I'm just showing you how to do it. Um, and as I said, I've never done it before, but I can't imagine why it wouldn't work out as long as, you know, I'm kind of, kind of reasonably neat and tidy with my, my size. Um, just any little thin artist brush. I've got quite a lot of different brushes in my studio, so just a thin one will do. Nothing special. I'm just paint in where you want your copper leaf. Now it's not going to be as detailed as the stamp. 
because there's detail that we can't possibly put in unless we paint it over the top of the copper. But as long as it's a suggestion of a leaf. I decided at this part, part in the video that I'd speed it up a bit because really it is a bit like watching paint dry and we guess, you know, you can paint in stamps, you, you get the general idea, but that's all I'm doing. I'm just painting in my stamps now. And once I've done the uh, flowers on the bottom of the piece, I move on and do all the flowers at the top. While the size is drying, I just take a palette knife and I introduce a little bit more of the Oxford Navy again, just to kind of frame off my flowers. So now I'm going to apply the copper leaf sheets onto the glue because it's it's thoroughly dry. You need nice clean hands. You can put a little bit of talc on your hands as well if you feel it's getting too sticky and try your best to kind of apply it in a full sheet if you can over the design. Smooth it down with your hands and then apply your next sheet. You can pick it up on the back of the paper if you feel that's easier. I just don't want my paper to stick to my design so and sometimes it can do that so pull the paper away and at the end of this you can gather up all the little bits that you haven't used and you can pop them in a little envelope and you can use them again for another project don't throw them away and um, they're useful for filling in little edges or anything you want to copper leaf um, so if you've never done this before that's how simple it is you just put the size on um, pat on your gold leaf your copper leaf or your gold leaf you can use gold leaf and you can now get silver leaf as well if you want to do something like this but maybe use silver and you just apply it to the whole design it really isn't that difficult it's quite sticky and it is messy I mean there's no denying it but the outcome is is very good and one more piece up the top here there and pull that bit off because I can use this bit up the top here sorry I'm not on camera I'm just using this little bit here of the top I just don't want to let it fall on the ground so we've got that on there's a little gap there that needs filling any bits that you can see through that you can see glue that you haven't covered try and get them all at once and now what you do is just pat it all down pat it and kind of burnish it into your glue and then with your hand just initially start on a bit there unless there wasn't glue in that part if it doesn't stick it'll only stick to where the glue is so get your rough edges away first and then what you can use is a makeup brush or any soft brush. I'm just using a big, soft, um, just an emulsion brush. And then you just start in circular motions, twirling around and around, getting rid of all the bits that haven't got the glue on them. And if you kind of brush, use your side of your brush, that kind of gets rid of and kind of pokes in all the bits that still need to come out. give it a good brush going sort of up and down and side to side and up and down and then your last good sort of clean off and just brush it off the rest of the piece and it is that simple and that's how effective it is once it's done so now I've showed you that I'm just going to go on and do the rest of my gold leaf and then we'll decide what we're going to do next so I started to put some copper gilding paste on which I'm going to put, I just did a little trial but what I've realised is it's all getting a little bit too orangey 
So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to add some greens. I've mixed some Amsterdam green and a little bit of um, uh, Provence together to get that sort of darker green. Uh, and I'm just lightening and darkening them in different variances. So I'm going to start with this sort of door here to show you what I do next. So using my kind of short dumpy palette knife, not my usual sort of long bendy one, I'm using the blues and greens that I've just explained and I'm just again toning down that orange and framing out my florals uh, where I've used my IOD stamps and copper leafed them. I'm just giving, I'm just letting them pop and as I said, I'm just a little bit too orangey and the blues and the greens really complement the oranges. I know they're not autumnal but they are, they really will work well with what we're doing. So this is all I'm doing. I'm just applying it with a palette knife. It always um, gives it such a really nice, unique finish when you when you apply paint with a palette knife. But it's more orangey than my copper and my copper is a little bit, little bit too shiny. Um, now I've put my sort of green flecks on it. That has really pulled it all together but what I'm doing is I'm just getting a little artist brush and I'm just putting some sort of low lights almost because this is darker than the the copper leaf just onto the flower just to kind of like just to kind of like make it not so shiny um, and kind of give it some a little bit more definition now I've done this side and I've done that side so it's just to let you see but the next thing we're going to do if I can just move my paint is um, I've done it on this side, but I'm now going to copper this, this all the relief on this side. Now these gilding polishes come with a handy dandy little thing in the, um, in the the lid to use, but I'm not probably not going to use that just for around here. So I'm just going to dip my finger straight in, and I'm just kind of like going to highlight. I'd already kind of started because that was when I realised it was going to end up looking really quite orangey if I didn't start to put some of the kind of greenier tones in and the greens go with the coppers so it's just a little bit here and there where you think um your piece kind of needs it um put some run down to some of this down the bottom edge now i'm gonna move my paint here and i'm going to just bring bring you over to show you what i do here now this edge here is where all my relief is so i'm just going to move the camera tilt it up a bit. I'm going to use my little sponge for this and I'm dabbing it in. It's quite thick this stuff. I've never used it before. I just normally buy it in a tube but I saw this and I thought I'd have a go. So I don't know whether I should test on something in case it comes out really fast. So I'm just running it across all the detail and hopefully you're catching that just to let everything really like pop. I'm not at the best angle, but you get you get what I'm doing here. Uh, put a little bit there. I'm turning down a little bit on the inside of the slip. Um, I think that's probably all I'm going to I might do here. And um, put um, on this because I don't want to completely lose the colour either. So I'll stop the camera and I'll show you me doing this on the the top of the unit as well. Before I show you the top, I just want to give you an idea of the how it's going so far. Now it's much, much brighter under the lights. Um, I'm trying to get a more sort of realistic sort of colour. It's, it's actually quite, it's a bit more muted and a bit darker than what you think you're seeing um, but this is how it looks so far so I'll reposition the camera and we'll gild up here so we're going to do the highlights with our gilding paste first So I'm not going to do all of it, I'm just, you know, I'm like, I'm not doing all the way around. 
I'm just doing specific areas, just giving them a little bit of a highlight, just to pull the rest together. So I think it would be a bit like that. drift there and move the camera over sorry about that this way just so you can see what I'm doing and I think that's probably enough of that now I'm going to get my brush again and I'm just going to take away some of this to shininess and put a little bit of depth into our copper leaf using the, the gilding paste, varnish, paste, whatever. Just here and there, just, just take away with that overall sort of shininess. I wouldn't normally do this if it was a gold leaf, I like it to fade away, but because we've put quite a lot of these coppery tones in. Yeah, it just stops it so being so full on shiny. Now, believe it or not, it's only been four or five days. Um, I think what we're going to do is I'm going to leave this and the next time you see it I'll be waxing it actually no I won't be I'll be um, I'll be furniture lacquer and I'll be using lacquer on it um, so that it protects the copper leaf I can then wax it again if I want after that but There now. So before I do any more, I'm just gonna make this face look so it doesn't need it. And I think I'll we'll call that done. Uh, I'm going to run a little bit maybe of this just across the front like that. I'll just see if I can bring the camera back. So I was thinking just doing not all the way over but just maybe to about there and maybe catch it up around the corner. So that's us done for today. I didn't film it being lacquered or the hardware being applied. So thanks for watching along and I hope you've enjoyed um, me doing my um, work on this piece of furniture. Um, if you've liked what you've seen today and you want to see more um, furniture makeovers and upcycles, then um, like and um, consider subscribing and push the bell so that you're notified when we upload a new video and um, we'll see you again another day. Thanks.